All right, well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining tonight. I know we still have a few more people joining in the next few minutes, uh, but thanks for joining this evening uh, for this UCPBA Ottawa webinar. Uh, welcome to your healthcare spending account hosted by two of our guests. Our first guest is uh, Nadia Sapno, who is, uh, in addition to being a board member of UCPBA Ottawa, is also an insurance and financial advisor and Marty uh, Kulas Insurance Agency. Um, and we also have Sarwar Qureshi, who is currently putting his kids to bed and is currently being shown as a refrigerator, but he'll be here in a minute, um, who is a tax planning specialist at Patterson and Company. So I want to thank both of them for taking the time out of their busy schedules and their evenings uh, to speak to all of our guests this evening. Uh, tonight's event will also be recorded and posted on our YouTube channel as well for those who uh, weren't able to make it this evening. So with that, um, a few other housekeeping things. As a reminder, if you have any issues, you can use the chat and you can send in your questions using the Q&A function as well. So uh, those are the kind of the housekeeping things. And with that, Nadia, I'll hand it off to you. Thank you, Christian, and uh, our pleasure to uh, to be here tonight and to uh, give provide some information about healthcare spending accounts. Um, so my name is Nadia Sahno. I'm financial and insurance advisor with Marty Kulis Insurance Agency. Uh, I've been practicing for uh, for nine years, and um, I'd like to introduce Sarwar uh, Qureshi. Uh, Sarwar uh, holds CPA and CA designations. Uh, he's Ottawa accountant and a partner at Patterson and Company, uh, Ottawa accounting firm. And um, Sarwar specializes uh, working with small businesses, early stage and startup companies, uh, various professionals. Um, he's passionate about his career. Um, he's also uh, balances his uh, accounting career uh, with the uh, referring, referring uh, basketball games. Um, Sarah is also a dedicated father and a husband, and he's raising two beautiful, beautiful daughters. Thank you, Nadia. My pleasure. And we are joined by Nadia, who is someone that I work very closely with on the investments and insurance side. And we have a lot of experience on collaborating on different types of files, and she also works with a lot of business owners and helps them with things like insurance planning, managing their investments, managing their retirement, and basically looking after all things that are financial. That's, uh, that's my specialty. Thanks, uh, Sarwar. So uh, tonight we're um, happy to share our experience and our knowledge about healthcare spending accounts and um, give some tips, some uh, basics about healthcare spending accounts and how they can be helpful uh, for yourself, for your healthcare needs, uh, and uh, how they can be tax efficiently managed um, and how they can be set up through your corporation. Um, so healthcare spending accounts were uh, introduced in 1989 by CRA and um, uh, for, for needs to meet uh, Canadian, uh, Canadian families' um, uh, healthcare needs, uh, because on average, a Canadian family spends a, a year around three to 5,000 uh, for healthcare expenses, such as uh, vision care, uh, dental care, any other uh, drug, uh, uh, drug prescriptions. Um, so if you do have a healthcare spending account, uh, you can uh, significantly uh, save uh, on these expenses. Um, so uh, I'll ask a question uh, uh, to Sarwar. Um, Sarwar, uh, uh, does one has to be incorporated in order to take advantage of a healthcare spending account? Yes, so the, the, the business owners that we work with, typically we look for them uh, to first of all, be a business owner and second of all, have their business set up as an incorporated entity. And then we go down the path of looking into a health spending account. Self-employed business owners who are not yet incorporated or might not be looking to get incorporated uh, might have some other options available to them that are different, but that is not the focus of our uh, presentation today. We are primarily looking for and focusing on the incorporated business owners and the health spending account benefits to them. And uh, I believe that healthcare spending accounts, they're uh, available for uh, Ontario residents. Um, uh, they're not available yet for Quebec-based companies. 
That's right. So, so provincially, there are some different uh, rules and, and guidelines that need to be followed. So uh, the primary uh, business owners that we work with are in Ontario. Uh, that's where we are located uh, ourselves. So typically, that's the focus of our presentation. If someone is located in a different province, you mentioned Quebec, and otherwise, then there could be some additional things to look into for those situations. Perfect. Thank you for clarifying that. So if I'm an individual and I have medical expenses, um, should I uh, should I claim them uh, on my personal income tax return or should I look into a healthcare spending account if I have a corporation? Yeah, so the the medical expenses at the personal level, if you do not have a health spending account, do provide potentially some benefit to individuals. And that benefit is through a tax credit called a medical expense credit. Now, the biggest thing to keep in mind is a credit at the personal tax return level is not a full dollar for dollar value like a deduction would be. And what that means is, let's say I have $1 of medical expenses. Uh, when I gets converted into a credit, that benefit to me, as far as a credit is concerned, is much lower. So it would potentially be 15 or 20% or somewhere in that range. So now that $1 of medical expenses that I've spent has a benefit to me in the form of a credit by reducing my taxes by 15 cents. And that's still something. So it does have some value to you as far as personal taxes go. However, that loss of the remainder, the difference, the 80% or 85% that is not claimable, that is the portion that's lost that we want to hopefully capture by having a health spending account, which is set, set up through a corporation. And we can talk about more of, on that in a moment. Perfect. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and um, in order to set up a healthcare spending account, you don't have to qualify for it medically. So if you have any pre-existing conditions, any health concerns uh, that would be assessed if you were to get an individual health and dental plan, and for example, some of pre-existing conditions, they might be excluded, whereas with healthcare spending account, they don't ask any questions about your health, um, any pre-existing conditions, they would be covered. So if you had any medical expenses related to your pre-existing conditions, um, you would be able to pay for it from your healthcare spending account. And uh, regarding age limits as well, uh, there is no uh, age limit as long as you are an employee of your company and you're actively working or involved uh, with the company. And um, uh, also healthcare spending account uh, extends to, to your spouses and to your immediate family. So your immediate family also would have to live uh, under the same address. Um, so let's go to the next slide. So let's talk about uh, eligible deductions and advantages of healthcare spending account. So healthcare spending accounts, they provide uh, great flexibility and control of your plan. Um, because you are as a plan holder, you set up your account, uh, you choose, um, uh, you choose uh, the uh, co uh, coverage amount, uh, uh, the employees uh, also control uh, which expenses they want to deduct, uh, not uh, unlike like with the uh, group plans where you have limits for, for example, for dental co coverage, for vision coverage, for drugs coverage, whereas here it's more flexible. So you 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 decide like it's it's individual on your needs. Um, what expenses you have, you can run them through your healthcare spending account. Um, so it's a, a comprehensive range range of um, coverage for medical, dental, vision expenses, um, and uh, it this healthcare spending account can also work with other plans. So, for example, if you are covered under a health plan of your spouse, so for example, not everything might be covered, or maybe eighty percent. So the remaining twenty percent you can claim under your healthcare spending account or uh, you can also receive reimbursement for the annual deductible amounts under your provincial drug benefit plans. 
So that's, uh, that's a great benefit as well. And 100% uh, of eligible benefits claims are reimbursed uh, up to the annual limits uh, that you set for your healthcare spending account. And another benefit is uh, the tax efficiency uh, because your health and dental expenses are 100% uh, deductible for your business and um, they're tax free uh, for yourself as an employee. Uh, this way, um, taxes are, are reduced for both. Um, Sarah, I don't know if you would like to add something about the tax efficiency. Yeah, so I think the main uh, thing that we're trying to get at is in the previous slide when I was speaking earlier, the individual is paying for the medical expenses and they do not have an HSA, therefore their only option is to claim those medical expenses on their personal tax return as a tax credit. There's also some additional things I did not speak about and that would include the, the medical credit needs a certain level of deductions or a certain amount before you qualify for it. So a health spending account basically introduces the concept of your company now entering into an agreement with a provider for the health spending account benefits such that if the individual incurs medical expenses, now they have this opportunity to pass those medical expenses through the, the HSA provider. And now the company can pay the medical expenses and get a corporate deduction for those expenses. Sometimes people ask me, well, I don't have an HSA set up. Can I still just use my company to pay for those expenses? And the answer is no, that would be considered a taxable benefit if the company pays for something that's medical in nature, that's a personal benefit and not something that can be deducted by the company. So having the setup is very important to allow for the corporate deductibility and all that does is now that we can use corporate dollars to pay for medical expenses as opposed to personal dollars. And we have an example a little bit later on to show the difference between the two in terms of dollar values. That's right. Thank you, Sarwar. And uh, so healthcare, uh, healthcare spending accounts, they're, uh, they're really simple to manage. And uh, in, um, in the comparison to, to traditional benefit plans, um, they are, um, uh, you, you pay for what you're using. Uh, and uh, you can also, at the end of the year, you can uh, generate reporting so you can analyze for what your expenses were. Um, so you are not paying, for example, like with the group plans, they, they might fit your needs at some at, at, at some point, but if uh, if you, for example, you use more dental or you use more vision, so with healthcare spending account, you can allocate those dollars to to those expenses that are actually applicable for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we will go to the next slide and uh, discuss eligible deductions. Um, so we always recommend uh, to, um, to always use Canada Revenue Agency as a referral point, reference point for uh, covered practitioners and covered expenses. Um, for example, um, once, you, once you set up such an account, uh, your accountant or your uh, financial advisor, they will send you those links. So before you claim any expenses, it's always good to, to, to check with the CRA website uh, to ensure that they would be covered. Um, like we have um, a list of some qualified medical practitioners. And uh, we oftentimes see that uh, clients use um, acupuncturist, chiropractor, dentist, um, ophthalmologist, like um, some professionals that might not be covered under your uh, group plan if you have one or um, individual healthcare spending account, sorry, individual health and dental plan. So um, this, is, uh, uh, this is a list of uh, major uh, healthcare providers that are covered. And then some of the eligible expenses. Um, so oftentimes we see um, dental services, uh, lots of dental services that people claim through this, uh, uh, through healthcare spending account, uh, uh, periodontical services, uh, laser eye surgery, 
um, those are oftentimes are covered under this plan. Um, oftentimes we see fertility treatments also under this plan. So um, once you set up a healthcare spending account, um, you'll have this list. So it's uh, easy to check and to navigate it. Um, so you could uh, ensure that uh, uh, the, the, the services that you're gonna, um, uh, you're gonna get or expenses uh, will be covered. And uh, we also have some uh, a list of eligible uh, medical devices and equipment um, that um, those um, items would be covered under your healthcare spending account. Um, again, you can have a look at them, and um, we could also send uh, send uh, send those lists to you after the presentation, and uh, and uh, you can also find it on the CRA website as well. Uh, so we would like to have a look at, uh, so here is also additional eligible expenses. So for example, under additional eligible expenses, uh, we oftentimes uh, get a question if vaccinations or uh, shots for uh, travel overseas are an eligible expense. And uh, yes, those are covered uh, as long as they're delivered by a nurse or a, a doctor uh, licensed in your province. And uh, oftentimes we also get a question if, um, if uh, premiums uh, that are used for travel insurance for business purposes can be covered under healthcare spending account. And yes, those would be covered. Uh, however, if you do have uh, travel insurance uh, and you have uh, cancellation insurance or liability insurance, uh, those would not be covered under, you would not be able to claim those under uh, your healthcare spending account. And uh, oftentimes we get a question, for example, in a situation if, um, if a family is divorced and their biological child is not uh, living with them. Um, so in those cases, if, uh, if the child is not living with you at your address, um, uh, they would not be covered. Um, so the children have to live uh, with your address in order uh, to pay for, uh, to, uh, to claim their uh, uh, healthcare expenses under healthcare spending account. Let's move to the next slide. So let's look at the cost of, um, of a claim. So what it usually costs to set up a healthcare spending account and uh, what you can anticipate uh, in, in terms of uh, expenses. So um, usually uh, there are various providers of healthcare spending accounts and uh, uh, usually they charge around a 10% administration fee on, on claims and plus applic uh, applicable taxes. Um, there is no uh, setup fees or no any other fees. So usually your uh, insurance advisor would discuss it with you, give you all of the details. If you choose to work with us, we will provide you all of the, that information. So there is no monthly premiums, like for example, what you will have with the group plan or um, a health and dental plan. So it's not monthly premiums that you pay. Uh, there are different providers and they, they're set up differently. Some of them work is that uh, you just, uh, um, pay as you go. So if you have, uh, if you incur a claim, you just submit it uh, with your receipts and, uh, and supporting documents and they will reimburse you. Or there are some providers that will, um, that, you will that, that will set up a healthcare spending account for you and you can fund it. For example, you can fund it for 5,000, for 10,000. Um, the maximum that is uh, recommended uh, by CRA is around 15,000, but we will discuss that as well. Uh, Sarah, you probably might have some input on that as well. Um, so here's a, an example of a claim um, of $100 for an Ontario resident. Uh, so the claim amount is one, 100, um, admin fee would be um, 10%, which is $10. And then there is HST, our uh, provincial premium tax, and the total um, total claim is uh, uh, $113.50. So the full amount of $113.50 is a business deduction for the corporation, and the uh, insured uh, gets reimbursed $100. That's what they paid for for a provided for a provided service. 
If anybody has any questions at any time, you are welcome to ask. Uh, we'll be pleased to answer any questions. So we're going to look at cost saving scenario. Um, Sarah, I'll let you maybe go through this uh, case and, uh, and uh, discuss the benefits and uh, the details of this uh, scenario. Yeah, certainly. So before we cover this scenario, even with the last scenario, I think the, the, the situation with the $100 is a good uh, starting point where the $100 is the amount of the medical procedure that's being uh, incurred. So that's going to be paid to the medical provider first and foremost. So the incremental cost of having the health spending account is the amount above $100, which in this case would be the $13.50. So naturally, the question that we would need to consider if the health spending account is worth it is, does the $13.50 in addition to having the health spending account um, outweigh the benefits or outweigh the other side of if we just incurred a $100 medical expense personally? And naturally, as I was saying earlier, the $100 medical expense incurred personally would only be claimable as a tax credit, which would have a, 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 you know, a percentage benefit to you, as opposed to, in the case of a corporation, the full $113.50 is claimable. So that extra amount that you're paying is also claimable. So now in the next slide, the example kind of walks us through a hypothetical situation for a family where they have income of $100,000 for the individual, and that individual also has a business that's incorporated. And in their household, we've made an assumption that there's five people living with them, you know, perhaps a spouse and some children. And in their case, all five people added together, the medical expenses for the household is $15,000. So this could be something similar to a, to a family situation that you know you or someone that you know might have. And I think the main thing that we first of all need to confirm is there is no insurance benefits available. So this person who is the incorporated business owner does not have any insurance benefits available like a group plan and their spouse also does not have any insurance benefits available. If they did, if either of them did, then we would utilize those benefits first because those would be available. Assuming they're not, the $15,000 of medical expenses can be paid in one of two ways. They can either be paid personally, uh, which is the, the normal or the more common way that they would be paid. And that's the column on the left-hand side. And then they could also be paid through a company, the incorporated owner, business owner setting up a HSA account and then using the company to help pay for those costs. And that's on the right-hand side. So just to compare the two, examples um, um, side by side. So on the left-hand side, the $15,000 of medical expenses that need to be paid personally, if those are funds that the owner needs to withdraw from their company in order to have that amount of money in hand to be able to pay for those expenses, then they would need to take out a certain amount of income in order to have the $15,000 to pay the medical expenses. So because of personal taxation and they are at the 43.41% tax bracket, there would be this extra 11,506 that would need to be paid in taxes in order to get $15,000 to pay for the medical expenses. So in theory, they would need to pay themselves $26,506, those two numbers added together, to be left with $15,000 after tax to pay for the medical expenses. They would use those medical expenses on their personal tax return for the medical tax credit that we talked about earlier. The value of that tax credit would be $25.75. So that's you know, roughly between 10 and 15% of the $15,000 of medical expenses that were incurred. And then the total cost to this individual is the $23,941. So basically they needed to take a withdrawal from their company of $26,506. They had a credit available to them 
of 2575, the difference between those two numbers, if they have uh, $23,941 cost to pay for the $15,000 of medical expenses. If we look at the right-hand side where the corporate dollars can be used directly to help pay for the medical expenses, there's the $15,000 of medical expenses first. In order to submit that claim to the HSA uh, provider, as we talked about earlier, there's the 10% admin fee, there's the provincial fee, there's the HST on the admin fee, and that all totals up to $17,025. So we, the, the company now is paying $17,025 to be able to get the $15,000 um, medical expenses covered. So the individual is basically reimbursed for the uh, $15,000 in medical expenses they they paid out of pocket by having $17,025 paid by the company. Now, the total cost in this scenario is the $17,025. That's basically the amount that the company is paying to cover the $15,000 in medical expenses. The difference between the two numbers at the bottom, the total cost to the situation without the HSA, 23941, versus the total cost to someone that has a health spending account, 17025, is a difference of $6,906. So that's basically the benefit of having the health savings account. And that's really uh, an example where someone could benefit if they have a business by looking into these options. That, that, that's right. Thanks, uh, Sarah, for explaining that. And um, again, like uh, sometimes clients are still confused about um, when they receive that 15,000, for example, here, uh, they're still questioning like uh, if they have to pay taxes on it, but uh, it's it's not like it's it's tax free reimbursement. It's not treated as a, it's not added to your income or nothing like that for the year. That's right. So it's it's really a reimbursement. It's kind of like it, 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 with certain um, insurance plans, you incur the medical expenses first, then you submit the medical expense uh, receipt to the, the insurance provider, and then the insurance provider sends you a reimbursement check. So similar to that scenario, the individual goes out, pays for the medical expenses with their own dollars first. So they use their credit card, they use their um, savings, they use money that they have to pay for it. With the receipt in hand, they go and submit the claim to the HSA provider. Then the company gets a bill from the HSA provider for the medical expenses plus those markup amounts that we talked about. And the company now has to pay the 17,025 to the HSA provider. So you've paid 15,000 as, as an individual for the medical expenses. The company has paid 17,025 to the HSA company. And once the HSA company has that money from you, they can then issue the reimbursement for the $15,000 of medical expenses. So truly at the individual level, you paid 15,000 and you got $15,000 back. At the individual level, you're basically even on the whole scenario. It's at the corporate level, you are left with the 17,025 as the out-of-pocket costs that, that are being paid by the company. That's right. That's a, that's a very good explanation. And um, there, there, are, there are also some healthcare uh, accounts uh, providers who allow you to fund the accounts. So for example, you can uh, fund, you can prepay 5,000. And then once you sub submit your claims, uh, they do all of the calculations. And uh, at any time you can check your balance and see what is left. And uh, you can you can add, add a little bit more if you can uh, to 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 recommend it maximum for healthcare spending accounts. So I see there were some questions. Maybe I'll check those. So do all employees need to be included in the healthcare spending account, or can only certain employees be covered? So. 
uh, all full-time employees have to be included in the account, uh, but if they do choose not to be included, then it's better for you to make a note on your uh, on their file in your corporation. And uh, oftentimes, we recommend for them for them to sign that as well that they were offered, but they decided to to decline the coverage. So just it's a it's it's a good protection for yourself. Like it's it's, it's we recommend to do that. Uh, the next question: uh, Can you use uh, can you use claim uh, the portion that your spouse plan uh, from another job doesn't cover in your HSA? Yes, you can. So any of those amounts that are not covered under your spouse spouse's uh, plan, you can claim those. Um, and uh, if uh, some of the um, of the uh, expenses are not covered by your provincial coverage. Uh, those also can be submitted under a healthcare spending account. I hope that clarified your questions. So enrollment, uh, how do I establish uh, the start date for eligible expenses in my uh, healthcare spending account for myself and my employees? So as a, an account holder, you can um, specify the effective date. Um, this is done by establishing your first uh, benefit year. And your benefit year can be any 12 months period ending in the current fiscal year. Um, so some of the benefits also can be um, claimed uh, retroactively. Uh, but uh, before doing that, we, all, we always guide you in that to make sure that uh, we set up everything properly. And uh, as a business owner, uh, you also can establish uh, the limits for healthcare spending account. So it would depend on, on your generosity towards your employees, or if it's just for yourself, then you determined, uh, then you determine the uh, amounts. Um, so usually, what we see, um, we see uh, something that is. Um, uh, safe uh, amounts for coverage are around fifteen thousand uh, dollars for executive positions. If you have executives in your in your company, and uh, seven uh, something around like seven thousand five hundred for senior managers, and maybe around five thousand for employees. So those are the maximum numbers. But uh, but you could you could decide what works for you, your company, and. Uh, uh, what your company actually can can cover the cost of those claims. Uh, Sarah, do you have any experience you would like to share what you see in your practice? Yeah, so I think the, the, the one thing that's really important is you mentioned this earlier, the health spending account, depending on the provider and the program you go with, doesn't necessarily have any cost to uh, enter into. So it's like pay as you go or pay when you need it. So that's one of the things that I think is really important um, for people to be mindful of. It's kind of like, I think of it almost like you don't necessarily need a line of credit, but if you had a line of credit and you happen to need it, then it's probably good that you had it when that time came, as opposed to trying to get it maybe in a situation where there isn't a lot of time or there's other pressure. So as a business owner, that preparation for the HSA could be very, very useful, even if you don't necessarily need it or use it, because it doesn't cost you anything depending on the provider you go with. It's only when you make a claim through the account that it would trigger those fees and everything that we talked about earlier. So I have some clients that set up an HSA and nothing comes up. You know, they don't have any medical expenses. Maybe they're healthy, they're young, um, or they have like something very small. They have a prescription for $20. They don't want to bother uh, claiming it through the HSA. No problem. But if something big does come up, then they really appreciate having had it set up, you know, some kind of situation, and then they don't have to worry about trying to establish it. They also don't have to worry about the dates. Let's say you incurred a bunch of medical expenses in January, and now it's April or May, and you're like, oh, I should have had an HSA. I'd like to set it up. Well, now, um, depending on the provider and the coverage, you'd have to look into, well, will they honor my claim for something that was incurred prior to my setting up. So it's really, really useful to have it set up and just sitting there like a line of credit. If you happen to need it, it, it's really good that you had it there. And if you don't need it, don't plan to use it. Well, it's still there as peace of mind. That's, that's how I look at it. And then the second thing, which relates to the question someone asked earlier, is if someone in the family like your spouse has uh, benefits, then we want to utilize those benefits first and foremost. So by all means, we, we maximize those benefits first. 
because that's already being paid for through a, a group plan. And after that, if there's amounts left over, let's say some benefits cover 80%. So if the 80% portion is covered and we'd still like to claim the 20%, boom, we have the HSA, we can claim it. Or you're, you're incurring a lot of medical expenses in a certain area and that's not covered based on your limits. Like for example, I have clients, they go for eye surgery. Well, the eye surgery amounts and the cost these days for those procedures well exceeds the, the coverage level for, the, for a plan. Orthodontics would be another one. You know, um, if, you, if you have someone getting that type of work done, most plans will not have coverage anywhere close to being able to cover that. So now the HSA can come in and pick up the difference. Perfect. Thanks, Arwar. Um, so another uh, important point is that in order to uh, qualify for HSA and uh, claim your expenses, uh, you have to be an employee of your company. So you do have to take to earn a T4 income. Um, as uh, you, you, you cannot establish it if you are just taking dividends. Um, so, and uh, we do recommend to draft uh, an employee agreement. Uh, so just in case if there was an audit or something, so you have that in place. Um, so unfortunately, with if you're drawing just dividends, it won't work. You do have to take uh, some uh, T4 income. Uh, Sarwar, do you have any, any advice on that? Yeah, so, so most business owners that we work with, one of the main conversations that we have annually with them is the whole idea of how they want to be compensated, whether it's salary or dividends or both. And that topic in itself could be an entire webinar. There's a lot of pros and cons of each option uh, that we could go through and, and go over. With that said, both options are very competitive and it, there is um, no uh, tax loss uh, in terms of uh, like having a better tax rate or worse tax rate for salary or dividends. So if the HSA is an opportunity to participate and utilize the benefits of it, then taking a salary to do so for us does not put anyone in, at a disadvantage had they taken a dividend instead. They're actually in a very comparable position overall. So someone could be on a dividend and like you said, to get on the HSA, we can switch them over to a salary if they have historically been paying themselves a dividend relatively quickly, or someone could do a combination of both. We have some clients that take a bit of salary and a bit of dividends. And once again, there's pros and cons to both. And as long as they have some portion of their earnings and salary, then the HSA and all of the, the enrollment and everything is, is okay. Perfect, thank you. And uh, enrollment is pretty easy. Um, it takes, um, it, you can set it up pretty quickly. So once you uh, decided that healthcare spending account is the right option for you, um, myself and Sarah, we can assist you with that. Uh, another important point that I wanted to mention is um, double, what they call double dipping is not allowed, which means that uh, any medical expenses already claimed on your personal tax return um, uh, for a medical expense tax credit uh, cannot be claimed again under your healthcare spending account. And uh, I would like to introduce our uh, lovely, uh, my lovely client, Irina. Um, she's one of my clients and she, um, she established healthcare spending account for her company. Um, she, is, uh, she has a psychology practice here in Ottawa. Uh, thank you, Irina, for joining us. You're welcome. Um, so I guess I'll just talk a little bit about my experience so far with the uh, health spending account. Um, so when being self-employed and don't have any coverage and uh, um, trying to find solutions and, and I just suggested going with this uh, plan. So um, I have a, a corporation that I am also an employee of and it allows me to expense any medical, any medical uh, expenses essentially. Uh, without worrying about um, the limit that uh, there is on the um, particular service. Um, so it allows me to not take money out of my personal income. Um, and it's a fairly straightforward process. So I generally um, pay up front with my own monies. Um, and once I submit the receipt, the um, 
the company processes it. There is a fee uh, that I pay for, um, for the convenience and the service. Um, and uh, that comes out of my corporate account. So um, I think uh, Sarwar and Nadia talked to you probably about the benefits of ta taxable benefits and all of that. So I'd be better position to explain that. But I'm, I would say I'm pretty happy with having uh, an option to have my medical expenses covered in a what feels like a, a a clever way to to allocate my my money. That's right. In, in, instead of taking that money out personally from your corporation, right, and then mm -hmm. paying those, those expenses, so um, yeah. your you use your corporate dollars to yeah. to. to those. And the other the other bonus is, you know, my partner is also self-employed, so neither one of us have um, benefits. So um, actually today he was saying he has a new dentist with a big bill. And I said, you know, we can just use my health spending account for that and not have to worry about it um, in terms of it coming out of our personal income. And obviously the corporation still has to has to pay for it. <laughs> he's trying to figure out who's paying for what. <laughs> But yeah, so, but it is still a much better way of, um, of managing my money and a peace of mind, yeah. Perfect, thank you. Thank you for sharing your experience, Irina. There isn't any questions I'm gonna pop out. Um, if anybody has any questions. I guess, I guess one question would be, since your company is paying for your spouse's um, medical bills, does that mean you get uh, some uh, bragging rights? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's... Um, some negotiation power. What's that? Negotiation power, exactly, yeah. yeah. I uh, it, Yeah, I didn't know this, but it's anyone who's living under your roof basically is eligible for, for these expenses. So that was cool to know, yeah. That's right. So if your kids, if your parents live with you, like they also, you also can submit their claims as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's a great option if you don't have any other coverage. So, because I've looked into, you know, other uh, options. Individual. That's one for you. Yeah. 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 This was the best plan for me. Yeah. And yeah. I, I really like the idea that I'm not restricted to any amount. You know, I don't have to kind of calculate the, the bits and pieces of, 80% of this. And so it's just hundred percent covered for a lot of different um, you know, paramedical and medical services. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Good recommendation. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Irina, for sharing and for joining us tonight. Bye -bye. Thank you. Have a nice evening, Irina. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Um, so what other questions we might have? So yeah, so the important one would be always to, um, to check um, before you submit a claim or before you go for that expense, because sometimes clients ask me even like for cosmetical uh, procedures, if, if they would be covered. So if they're recommended by your doctor or uh, like you always, like if they're kind of like questionable, like for example, uh, some of the cosmetic procedures, some of the equipment for your house, like uh, air purifiers, um, humidifiers, dehumidifiers. So if those are, uh, if you get a note from your doctor that those are recommended for you, like for your health, for improving your health or for any um, medical issues that might, you might have, uh, those would be covered. And um, another question that we often get, uh, uh, if uh, you can um, claim your gym membership or some sports equipment, so those unfortunately are also not covered, um, but uh, those are actually can be covered. You can add additional coverage, which, which is called a, well, a wellness spending account. So that's also an option to have. And you can actually under that one, you can also, you can claim your gym membership, some of your sports equipment, even some of the uh, sports clothes. So there are options for that as well. Uh, what, if we have any other questions? Sarwar, so, do, you, do you sometimes have some, um, some other concerns that come up with your, with, the, with your clients with healthcare spending accounts? Yeah, I think this might relate to a question 
and that someone asked earlier about do all employees need to be included in the health spending account? And I know you answered that question, Nadia, when you said, yes, all full-time employees need to be included. I think it's worth adding though, that there can be categories of the health spending account limits for different categories. So let's say you as the owner uh, want to have a high limit or a higher limit. Obviously as the owner, you'd want the highest limit possible. So the, the, the ceiling that generally is um, recommended is about 15,000 for owners executives. Then you could have another class or category for owners, at, uh, sorry, not owners, but employees at different levels. So perhaps the, the, the question that was asked someone was thinking about, well, you know, if I give myself a $15,000 limit, does that mean all my employees can now go out and spend uh, that amount and I have to cover them as well? And the answer is no. If they are not at the same level as you, maybe they're uh, in, a, in a middle management position, maybe they're an employee, not even in management, you could set up different tiers and maybe have um, different levels of coverage. That would be something that would probably require a little bit more uh, case by case conversation. But, you know, for example, you could have a lower threshold, maybe $10,000 for people that are uh, managers. And then maybe for people that are not management, you could have a limit of $5,000. That way you do offer that benefit to other people uh, and, and all employees need, full-time employees need to be included for the health spending account if you decide to get it. However, you're maybe capping your exposure or cost so that you're not necessarily spending that same amount on them as you are for yourself. And that makes it a little bit more manageable. That's right. And you always have to think about um, your company's ability to cover the cost and, um, and also consider your generosity towards your employees. And uh, it can be as an incentive for them. So oftentimes also we see uh, business owners offer increased amounts based on their uh, years with the company. So for example, after one year, it can be like, um, uh, they, they give them maybe like one, uh, 1,000, it depends also per class. Um, maybe after three years, it can be 3,000. So you can have those um, increments, uh, how you um, reward your employees and encourage them to stay with your company. Um, so there are different options and uh, great flexibility with these plans. Um, easy to set up, easy to navigate. Um, main thing, you always want to be on a compliance side. So uh, stick with, uh, within those limits for, uh, for maximums. Um, so this where also your financial insurance advisor uh, will advise you. And a good uh, accountant tax specialist also uh, will coordinate with you. And um, the claim process is pretty simple, straightforward. Um, if, um, if you are a business owner and uh, um, you, you um, as uh, all of us, you probably have a health, health expenses, dental, vision care, um, healthcare spending account uh, would, be, would be a good uh, opportunity to, um, to pay for those expenses. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody ha might have any other questions. We're we're happy to answer them. I think there's one think question in the chat, uh, Nadia. It's about yeah, the, uh, the the wellness accounts. Could you speak more about wellness account for gym membership and equipment? How does it differ from healthcare spending accounts? So uh, the idea is the same. Um, oh, you also set up limits and there is also a list for covered expenses. So under those, you would claim your gym membership, sports equipment, uh, some gym clothes. Uh, I believe um, even some, like if, uh, if you have a certain diet that is recommended to you by your nutritionist, some of those um, protein shakes and stuff also can be claimed, uh, claimed after that, uh, under that plan. Um, the limits are, however, smaller uh, than for healthcare spending account. And uh, um, there are various providers, so uh, you don't have to have a healthcare spending account. You can set up a well wellness account on its own. Um, also, same structure, how it works for the co uh, corporation as well. So your corporation pays um, uh, for the expense and you receive the, uh, the benefit tax-free. 
server, are you familiar with those wellness accounts as well? Um, they're not as common, I would say. Like, even health spending accounts, I should say, are not that common. Like, a lot of people mm -hmm. don't know about them. So, in, in the world of getting people familiar, we kind of start with the health spending account as the first thing that might be of interest and of value and benefit to people and get them aware of that. And then wellness accounts, I would say, are a subsect or less um, common than that. But obviously, once you go down that path, you're looking into all different options that might be available to you and a benefit to you. So naturally, maybe that's a future topic or, or another um, area of interest that you know we can share some information with people on but that would be like a later conversation maybe we would start with like the health spending account as more um primary or more um applicable first to at least get knowledge on it and then we'd move on to the wellness account later on but i would say like the health spending account you know i'm i'm, I'm not i don't have any specific stats but let's say if only like 10 percent of clients have that uh, in place, which is not very much to begin with. The wellness account would be even like a fraction of that. So that, you know, it might be like 5% um, right. of the 10%, which would be like a very small uh, number overall. That's right. But uh, if you do have those expenses, it makes more sense to run them through your company to pay for them with your corporate dollars. And um, and we do see more, more of those are used, utilized by uh, by companies to to uh, to to have retainment of their employees to encourage like to encourage them to stay with the company. So there are also different structures for healthcare spending accounts, wellness accounts that uh, that employers are using for uh, talent retention and and uh, growth of their business. So th those were good questions. I think we might have one more question. No, yeah, that, definitely. Was the, that was the question that we just addressed. So maybe Nadia, if I can, if I can thank you and Sarwar for uh, a very interesting conversation and a very uh, Definitely something to, to be thinking about and very uh, important, especially as obviously as a business owner, as an incorporated business owner, uh, lots of good, um, lots of good suggestions and feedback. So I want to thank both of you for taking the time out of your, of your, out of your evenings. Um, if you have any questions for our audience listening either this evening or in the recording afterwards, uh, do reach out to Nadia if you have any more questions or if you need some tax and planning advice, uh, Sarwar as well. Both of them, I'm sure, would be happy to help you out uh, for in your in your business planning and your tax planning and in your health spending account planning. So unless there's anything else for you, Nadia, or from you, Sarwar, uh, anything else to add? I, I think just getting people aware of the program was our goal today. If someone wanted to have like a specific conversation about how it might benefit them or if they're uh, like, like I think that the doctor that uh, came on earlier was a great example where someone was self-employed, realized they might be missing out on deductibility of medical expenses, decided that, you know, having a company and setting up an HSA could benefit them, has benefited from it, and now their spouse is benefiting from it. Um, you know, that's, that's a great uh, case study and happy to kind of walk someone through those steps if, if they have that type of situation. Great. Well, thanks so much. Thank you to you both. Uh, to everyone else who's listening, have a great rest of your evening. And again, this, uh, the event will be uh, this webinar will be recorded or has been recorded and rather will be posted on our YouTube channel as well. So thanks again, Sarwar. Thanks to Nadia and thank you everyone and have a good rest of your evening. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks everyone. Have a good evening.